In this second session, you identify the competencies of critical thinking, evaluate existing pedagogical strategies that support the development of critical thinking skills, and access resources to enhance critical thinking opportunities in the future. Critical thinking is defined as the objective analysis and evaluation of an issue in order to form a judgment. At its deepest level, critical thinking can transform learning. When students are asked to use information to create something new, examine information, make judgments, and explore relationships between material, the depth of learning increases. When students express their thoughts and ideas using multiple methods, such as written, oral, nonverbal, visual, or digital, they demonstrate critical thinking through information and discovery, interpretation and analysis, reasoning, and problem solving, especially when students analyze unfamiliar situations and find solutions to real-world problems that they have discovered. Critical thinking fits into the three domains of learning, specifically the cognitive domain. The cognitive domain involves knowledge and the development of intellectual skills. The cognitive domain includes the recall or recognition of specific facts, procedural patterns, and concepts that serve in the development of intellectual abilities and skills. There are six major categories of cognitive process, starting from the simplest to the most complex. We know this as Bloom's taxonomy. The six categories of Bloom's taxonomy can be thought of as degrees of difficulty. That is, the first ones must normally be mastered before the next one can take place. Bloom's taxonomy was created in 1956 under the leadership of educational psychologist Dr. Benjamin Bloom in order to promote higher forms of thinking in education. This included analyzing and evaluating concepts, processes, procedures, and principles, rather than just remembering facts or rote learning. It's often used when designing educational training and learning processes. However, the taxonomy that you see on the screen may be slightly different from the one that you're used to. That is because this is Bloom's revised taxonomy. This new taxonomy reflects a more active form of thinking and is perhaps more accurate in regards to the teaching and learning process. Take a look at the definition for each one of the categories in the revised Bloom's taxonomy. Where does your current teaching and learning practices fall? Now think about the assessments that you provide your students. How do these assessments capture the information by having students justify a stand or decision based on the situation posed? Perhaps you also allow students to create new or original work that truly demonstrates their application of new knowledge within their personal or professional context. As we continue to leverage technology to support the teaching and learning continuum, a digital taxonomy aligned with Bloom's has emerged. As you can see on the screen, the digital taxonomy aligns activities with digital tools that ultimately allow for deeper critical thinking to occur. The remainder of this presentation will go through each category and provide digital tools and resources that can help support the depth of knowledge and use of critical thinking skills as we continue our quest to promote higher order thinking within our educational offerings. Creating new or original work allows students to truly demonstrate their understanding of concepts. Through blogging, filming, podcasting, or directing, students' voice can be seen and heard in the application and demonstration of ideas. 
tools to support this creation of new or original ideas include Edublogs, VoiceThread, and iMovie. All three applications allow for creativeness to shine. VoiceThread, for example, allows students to build online presentations by adding images, documents and videos and other media to which other users can add comments for discussion. When it comes to the justification of a stand or a decision, students get to evaluate their thoughts and opinions. Through grading, testing, posting, and moderating various discussions and applications, students can use critical thinking skills to evaluate and engage with others. Tools to help support this are Quizlet, iRubric, and Blackboard. Quizlet, for example, provides an online study application that allows students to study various topics via learning tools and games. iRubric allows you as the instructor to build or select from existing rubrics to facilitate assessment and provide feedback on students' work. As you all know, Blackboard has many of these features built in, including the use of discussion forums that allow students to engage around topics of conversation or questions posed by the instructor or the students themselves. Activities that allow for mind mapping, surveying, linking, or validating of ideas allow students to analyze information, make judgments, or explore relationships between materials. Digital tools such as FreeMind, an open source mind mapping software program, allows for knowledge to be captured from one or more students by placing a topic in the center of an empty space and branching out with related ideas. Creating surveys using tools like SurveyMonkey also allow for the information to be gathered so that it can be analyzed by the student in relation to a specific topic. When students are asked to use information to apply, demonstrate, interpret, practice, or solve problems, they begin to think critically. Office 365 provides multiple applications that allow for students to calculate, change, edit, and upload knowledge so that others can view. Other applications, such as Gliffy, can be used with Office 365 to allow students to draw flowcharts, create org charts, and collaborate with their teams. As students develop their critical thinking skills, they are often asked to comprehend and grasp the meaning of content to explain, infer, predict, compare, contrast, or interpret materials. Activities with digital tools to support this include journaling, tweeting, tagging, and subscribing to various sources in order to obtain information. One of the best tools of the Microsoft Office 365 suite is OneNote. OneNote can be used for multiple functions and can be set up and used as a class. OneNote provides a journal or an electronic notebook for students to organize, document, reflect, and create in order to support their learning. In addition, tools such as Bubble.us allow for multiple students to collaborate in order to share information. When students begin to learn about a specific topic, they are often asked to observe and remember information to define, list, recognize, or recall material. Students demonstrate critical thinking by recording ideas and summarizing information in written form, often captured through bookmarking, copying, highlighting, or searching for information. As we all know, Google is a great tool for students to search the web for information related to a specific topic. However, digital citizenship and the use of digital materials also needs to be reinforced with students. A great tool for creating online flashcards is CRAM. CRAM allows students to search for existing flashcards 
that have been created around various topics or to create their own flashcards that they can use or share amongst their classmates in order to support crowdsource learning. Both of these methods allow students to present summarized information or answer questions for drill and practice given by the teacher. In order to promote higher forms of critical thinking in education, we must plan for the teaching of critical thinking, especially when it comes to the use of digital tools to aid in that process. Here are five steps to plan for teaching critical thinking. Step one, determine the learning objectives. Step two, teach through questioning. Step three, practice. Step four, review, refine, and improve. And step five, provide learning feedback. As a reflective practitioner, you will find ways to support critical thinking and elicit the best out of your students.